Hello there, folks. Welcome to another Railroads Online video. Uh, they have released a another update for the game. Uh, it is also on sale right now uh, for, uh, I want to say like 25% off as of speaking, just a few days before Thanksgiving 2022. But uh, we got another update to look at here. They've added a few things and updated uh, a few things as well as far as the game mechanics and performance and things like that. I will link down below where you can see all the finer details, but today we're just going to go over a few things. You can see pretty much here everything they've added right off the bat. Uh, one of which is the the bumpers, or the buffers, or train, or rail car stops, which look very nice. And were kind of needed for quite a while, because a lot of people were kind of making their own doohickeys, if you will. And uh, a gallows turntable. Now, this thing is really cool, really unique turntable, uh, easily recognizable, an old Americana, and, uh, you know, narrow gauge, and old Western railroading, and all that good stuff. So this thing itself is really neat, and they made it very, very easy to throw the thing down now, which I will try to uh, put on display here, just in case for a hot minute. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a piece of rail down, because before... Putting down turntables were a bit of a pain in the ass, if I'm completely honest. So we're going to just throw that down. So we got our track. You're just going to select your turntable. So you got two turntables now. Bam. And it's on there. It's lined up perfectly. No, uh, no crazy stuff going on where you got to kind of lay the terrain and then so on and so forth. And then on the other end, you just do the same. Grab your track. Link it up. And your gravy. Look at that. Very simple. So they've done a lot of things in ease of use and access now. But uh, so we got that. We got the gallows turntable and the bumper over there, which can be placed down very easily as well. It's just a, a matter of selecting that and then selecting the bumper itself. And you would just throw it on the uh, the bit of, uh, you know, the end of a, uh, a line or whatnot. What you will need to do with these, though, as you see, it just throws it on top of the terrain. Is you will need to uh, lay down, um, you know, some dirt, some gravel to uh, to get rid of that. So let me go ahead and get rid of this here. There we go. But one of the coolest things about this update, and again, this is free. This is just an overall game update. So this is a consolidation now. This is an interesting locomotive. Uh, in the notes, they call it a Mosca, M-O-S-C-A, but I think it was called a Moscow, M-O-S-C-A-O. I could be entirely wrong. This thing had some interesting history to it. So it is, of course, a Constellation or a Connie 280. Um, it was built in 1873 for the Denver and Rio Grande Railway by Baldwin, of course. The model that they called it was a 1022E. Now, you know, judging by history and things online and such, uh, it was coal-fired. Now, this is wood-fired, obviously, as is a lot of stuff in this game. Uh, it, of course, was a three-foot narrow gauge, had a Stevenson valve gear, weighed about 52,000 pounds, uh, put down roughly about 10,000 pounds of tractive effort, a little, little bit less than that, had 40-inch drivers as well, um, but it, uh, it's got a bit of a neat backstory, so I'm pretty sure it was called the Moscow, or Moscow, or something like that, um, I feel like I'm swallowing my tongue saying that, but like I said, it was originally built for the DNRG uh, as their number 13, what they called Moscow, uh, but for whatever reason, they didn't like it, and they pretty much didn't want it, <laughs> didn't want to use it, turned it down, sold it off, for whatever reasons. Um, but what's interesting about it as well is it was the first narrow gauge Connie built in the U.S., so this thing right here, what we're looking at. Uh, so they sold it later that year to old EBT, or East Broadtop, which you can see I've got on the uh, tender there, as close as I could get it to the real deal, which is a very cool railway, was and still is. Uh, but they sold it to them later in 1873, and they seemed to like it, because they ordered two more to the exact specifications at the time. 
Uh, I think they even kept the diamond smokestack and, and things like that. But later on, they got it reboilered in uh, the late 1800s, like 1890-something, as well as uh, extending the smoke box. Um, got to put a new stack on it, like a top hat stack, running boards, lights, all kinds of stuff. And they ran it for a couple of years, and then it became surplus uh, because they got, you know, better locomotives and whatnot that just did what they were looking for a lot better and a lot easier so they sent this on to uh what was it tuscarora valley i think and then it was later scrapped in about 1917 so it had a good run um so yeah it's got a little bit of interesting history but this is a new free locomotive you get in the game i'll go ahead and open this up and show you where it's at show you how much it is show you what it says Ba -ba barrel. There we go. Yeah, I think there's supposed to be an O on here. Anyway, finer details. So it says power type steam, obviously. Baldwin Loco Works 1022E1, build date 1873, 280, three foot gauge. Aha, and that, the ghost bell as usual. Weight 55,000 pounds, so some information differs. Uh, fuel type wood, even though in real life it was coal, if I'm not mistaken. Boiler pressure, 130 PSI, but I think every loco in this game says 130 PSI. Uh, and this says 12,675 pounds tractive effort. You can, of course, change it, uh, change the smokestack around, um, change the headlight. I wish you could change the headlight to a slightly, um, you know, later in the century type, a little bit smaller and, and less, you know, fancy stuff. Uh, and then the paint, you can't change the paint, sadly. It would be cool to kind of black it out a bit and make it look like the EBT. Uh, what did they call it? What did, what did the EBT nickname it? Rock? Rock? Rockwood? Rockledge? Rockland? Something like that. But anyway, it doesn't cost that much either. It's $3,600, um, you know, compared to everything else, which, you know, is, is fairly cheap. But it's, it's a decent-looking locomotive, and it's just more... To add to your toolbox or your roster so we'll just take a look at her here again the modeling looks uh you know fairly on par for some of the latter stuff to come in the game i, I don't think it looks as good as is say the mogul but you know those were different um modelers and and whatnot and you know the game is changed a little bit as as far as you know who's doing what and things of that nature but uh it still looks pretty good it looks pretty good. You can uh, extinguish and light the lamp just like that. I don't think it's got flags or markers you can put on the front here. Uh, let's see. What am I looking at? Yeah, no, you can't. You can throw this up if you need to shove some cars, of course. It doesn't work fantastically well but it uh, it'll get the job done if you need it to just make sure and put them handbrakes on the cars so they don't go flying out of control let's look at the uh, emblem here Baldwin Loco Works Burnham Perry Williams and Co number 3712 1875 Philadelphia yeah looks pretty good though it's it's a big boy it's a it's a it's a chungus locomotive it's got a uh, a pretty good sized cab too but the boiler takes up most of it and get up under here a little bit and have a look around yeah i mean it looks pretty good it just doesn't seem to look as clean as, as some of the earlier locomotives but uh you know as a lot of us know it's you know modeling has changed hands uh and and you know some people have gone their separate ways and and whatnot these little steps look nice here that one's even got some uh that looks pretty cool it's got some some rubbed off bits there like the paint's been rubbed off somebody stepping on and off a lot this seems to look like it's got some weird little artifact there right in the middle i'm not sure what that is have a look at the tinder them break shoes on there look all right you got plenty of room on the tender here for uh, whatever you'd like to name it. Get up top here is our water tank. Got your wood just like usual. We'll just give back to nature. Uh, it does kind of clip through this bar right here, which I noticed it doesn't exactly fit that well. I'm not sure what's going on there. Got your handbrake, of course. 
Uh, and this thing is cramped. Good lord, this thing is cramped. Open it the same way as usual. You will have to uh, couple up your tender when you first throw it down, which can be a, a bit of a, a pain in the dingus. You can open the windows, which is nice. I believe you can open these doors up. I thought you could. I guess not. All right, so that's another thing. They've got a new bell sound. And it sounds pretty darn good. Sounds a lot more cleaner and crisper and clearer than the uh, original bell sound. Anyway, open that uh, dome cap. You can look at that. There's sand packed to the gills in that son of a biscuit. Have a look on this side here. Yeah, good looking locomotive. Pretty thick. Pretty thick. Not a whole heck of a lot of room in this thing, though, as they were back in the day. Got you a lantern in here as well. And uh, let's chuck some wood in here. We'll, we'll take her down the track a bit. Throw some more in there. There we go. Alright, so let's throw her in reverse because I've got the uh, the roundhouse or turntable, sorry, out of whack there. So that's not very cool. Alright, so we'll throw it in reverse. Come off the brake here. Oh, Lord. We don't want to go forward. So the bell, yeah. That's a new bell sound. New bell sample. And it sounds pretty dang good. As far as the whistle itself, I think it's kind of the same generic whistle sound. You know, I don't think it's so much the actual whistle sound or sample itself. It's just the way that it's kind of implemented. Uh, can make it seem kind of funky. We'll throw the, uh, the cylinder cocks on here as well because them suckers shoot out big time. And, of course, their steam effects look incredible. I, I can't think of any, any other train sim in the world that, uh, that has nice-looking steam effects like that. But she seems fairly heavy duty with the light, very light testing I've done so far. Can pull quite a bit. Uh, as far as your insane grades and massive, you know, coal or oil trains or whatnot, I'd probably still stick with the Climax or Heisler or whatnot. But this is kind of like a go-between here. You could, uh, you could probably do a little bit of everything with this sucker. All right, we'll just throw the rig wide open here. Too much track back there. But yeah, she's a good looking little engine. Um, so nice, nice little update. We got a, another Connie that, uh, you know, was built for the DNRG, but ultimately probably spent most of its time at uh, East Broadtop. But uh, it's a good looking locomotive. Nice uh, kind of mid range. Um, you know, multiple duty type locomotive, if you will. And then, of course, we've got the gallows and uh, and the new bumpers. They uh, they also did a couple of things, um, you know, in terms of the actual gameplay and, and tinkered with the performance. So you should get a few better frames. I feel like my game is running a bit smooth, uh, you know, compared to, to how it was last time. And they've also teased, which I am very much looking forward to. I'll go ahead and link down below where you can go and find this and take a look for yourself. Uh, just to not spoil any surprises, but uh, I'll just say Uinta. Keyword, Uinta. And I'll I'll leave you with that. They're, they're teasing a couple of locomotives that are uh, that seem to be on the, the very near 
horizon. But that's it, folks. Just a quick Railroads Online update just to uh, have a look at. Go and, go and get it installed and have a go with it if you got the game. If not, it is on sale right now once again. But uh, that's it. I'll see you next time, folks. Thanks for watching. Take care.